Good afternoon. Welcome. It is June 20th, 2023, and the Eakin Minnesota Supercharger has just opened. It's now showing in the app, but still not in the car navigation. But I was able to come here and get a good charge, even though I was at a little higher state of charge. They're showing up in the app so far, but not in the car nav. But you can kind of tell that the light is on. It turns on. And like a good V3, this should pop up in just a few seconds. So we are at 2B. Let's see what the car is saying. All right, we're at 57%. So not gonna be blazing fast today, but it is charging. At 90 kilowatts, I think we saw 91 there, which is just fine. I didn't precondition because this isn't in the navigation yet. So we'll let this go for a few minutes while we talk about the new place. This charger is pretty near my home. And so it's great, it's exciting, but I'm really not going to be the one to use it. But the upside of that is I've been able to drive by here pretty frequently and take pictures of the progress. And so I wanted to show you from April 10th when the first equipment was dropped off, as far as I could tell, all the way through it opening today. And I went by and took pictures about every week, a little bit of video as well, and wanted to talk through the process, kind of the, the ups and downs of how this process went, bringing this supercharger to you. Let's jump back a little farther to give you the lay of the land. These things take a long time in the planning phases, but the first I heard of it was from Marco RP Tesla posting the location on Twitter on July 31st of 2022. This shows the lot and the placement really well. Then this drawing was posted to Tesla Motors Club showing the initial layout, although the final product is altered slightly. Zooming out, if you're not familiar with the Midwest, this is off of Interstate 35, which runs from southern Texas all the way up to Duluth on the shores of Lake Superior. As 35 runs through the Twin Cities, it splits into 35W, which runs through Minneapolis, and 35E, which runs through St. Paul, before joining together again. We're here in the South Metro, a couple blocks from 35E, also fairly close to the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, the Mall of America, and the Minnesota Zoo. Okay. Enough of that. Let's fast forward to April when I first saw the equipment dropped off. This panorama shows that same parking lot corner fenced off and the two tractors dropped off. Notice the white pallets and tent structure on the right side. These are part of the Cub Garden Center, not Tesla equipment. This corner is where the pull-in spot will be, as well as the charging cabinets and new transformer. As we look down the line, you can see an older red fence that will be replaced, and it's more obvious here that no Tesla-specific hardware is on site. These first couple weeks were crazy, with lots of rain and at least one heavy snowstorm. So when I came back the next week, I was surprised to see that they'd been digging and framing, but not too surprised that the hole was filled with water. I'm sure that was super annoying for the crew. By now, Tesla's equipment had shown up. Unlike some of the prefab station that we've seen installed elsewhere, these pedestals would be placed individually, probably due to the curve in the parking lot. Here are those individual bases. The pedestals, cabinets, and some landscaping materials had also arrived. The next Sunday, April 23rd, showed the water drained away, large conduit placed and buried, and pedestal bases trenched out and placed. Going around the corner here into the shrubs gives a little different vantage point, and the reverse angle from near the garden center shows the 11 back install bases along that curve. The cabinets and pedestals had been unboxed, so I got a close look at those while being careful to stay outside the fenced area. Odd that a cabinet had been left open over the weekend, but maybe the wind caught it. The concrete pads had been poured by the following week, and more ground filled in around what would be the new curb line. They'd tidied up some of the supplies along the fence and in the process of running conduit down the line of bases. On May 7th, the next Sunday, forms were in place for the new curb section. The new transformer and Tesla's cabinets were all in place on their new pads. Most of the pedestals installed and even some landscaping done. This week really surprised me with how fast things came together. 
But what's with that missing pull-in spot pedestal? I'd find out in a couple weeks, but my next check-in was the following Saturday. It was May 13th, and the landscaping was looking sharp. The new curb looked great, and things seemed to be close to done. Still missing a meter from the utility, and where was that pull-in spot pedestal? The next week surprised me again, but this time in how little seemed to have changed. Obviously, I don't know what's going on behind closed cabinets, but other than some new visible wires from the pull-in spot, it almost looks like things had gone backwards. Still no meter, no pull-in pedestal, and now four stalls were wrapped. And finally, mystery solved, I found the missing pedestal. You can't tell in the photos, but to me, in person, it looked like something had run into it and caused some damage, cracking part of the shell of the supercharger. My guess is it happened as the transformer or cabinets were being placed a couple weeks ago, and that's why we haven't seen it since. One good sign is that the bobcat was on a trailer looking like it was ready to be picked up. Sure enough, a little over a week later, a small backhoe was the only equipment left. Also a great tip-off by my friend Jeff, the meter from the utility was now in. Parking spaces had been painted in, complete with a handicap space. A new fence had been built, and new trees and shrubs planted in the landscaping too. Last but not least, our old buddy the pull-in spot finally had its pedestal. A week and a half later, and just over two months since the first equipment had been dropped off, the station looked complete. Equipment and pallets were all gone, but the fence was still up. I figured we must be close, so I started driving by once a day. On the next Saturday... June 17th, and the fence was gone. The fence is down, but no power yet. But we must be close here in Egan. You'll notice the pedestals are in the center and not off to the side like in older stations. So uh, that will make it easier when we open up to other vehicles, other brands. Pretty cool. Now this is a pretty good location. It's a couple blocks off of a major roadway of Cliff Road and Interstate 35E. This is a pretty busy retail area and plenty of apartments around. So this will be really handy for people who live there and may not be able to charge in those places. Right when we got married, we lived in an apartment just about a mile away. So this would have been our spot had we had a Tesla at that time and had this been open. That's a lot of what ifs. But it's really great and going to be handy for those people, even though I personally won't see much benefit from it. But this was a needed part of the Twin Cities to have some fast charging, so I'm really excited to see it here. There is plenty of retail around, although the Cub and the immediate strip mall is going to be the easiest to access. A little closer to the highway, there is a Target, uh, some restaurants along the way in some strip malls, a Trader Joe's, a movie theater, and other restaurants along Cliff Road there. So if you're really hungry coming to this location, you're going to want to probably grab something there before coming here to charge. It's not too far of a walk to Cub, and this is not going to be a high traffic area, so it should be easy to come in here and park without much trouble. We do have a handicap accessible spot that's marked to be used last. A good call out. I know they're putting that in in a lot of new chargers coming out right now. So that's something to be mindful of as you're parking and finding your charge spot. There is also a pull-in spot where if you needed to kind of hang a trailer around that corner, you might be able to do it. Probably not ideal, but again, this part of the parking lot isn't too busy and you should be able to work around that. If you needed to catch a nap overnight while charging or after charging, this would be a relatively safe place to do that. Obviously be aware of what's going on around you, but I wouldn't have any qualms about stopping here overnight and getting at least a few hours of sleep if I needed it. But if I wanted a better night's rest, I'd level two slow charge and stay at either the Candlewood Suites or the Hilton Garden Inn just a few blocks away. For you technical folks, I got close-ups of the info on the transformer and the cabinets. Enjoy this thrilling b-roll. Or pause and take a closer look. Then we'll check out the end of my charging session here. It's kind of a weird angle that that sits at. But I could have backed up another foot and that probably would have given more slack. Well, that was perfect. That finished just as I was done filming b-roll. So, unplugging. These cables are sure nice and new. And let's see what we got. 
Got up to 90%. And it charged me $9.43. And it's uh, it stopped at 716. Plenty of charge. Not that we really needed it, but fun to be one of the first here. Saturday morning, and we had coffee and donuts with the Minnesota Tesla Owners Group members who wanted to wake up early. And a few folks who just stopped by to charge. A nice time to hang out, charge, and enjoy some Tesla talk before the rains came in. Jason's Plaid Model X in Ultra Red was the bell of the ball. Thanks to everyone who came out and to the Tesla team for knocking out this station so quickly. So in just over two months, this went from nothing to completed and enabled, and that's pretty exciting. And a great new spot for charging coming south out of St. Paul. I think people are gonna find this a really useful spot. Wish it was a little closer to the highway, but all in all, it's a welcome addition. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, share, subscribe if you did. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and happy charging. <laughs>